Okay. So uh, with the go for it theme, um, it was mentioned multiple times in the book, um, most notably by Deacon Chapman uh, to Tyler, the main character. Um, and let's let's run down, you know, all of the characters in, in the book. Uh, like I say, we have Tyler, we have Ronald, Tyler's dad, Joy, Tyler's mom, uh, Chloe, Tyler's younger sister, Ryan, uh, Tyler's friend and the person that introduced him to golf. Yep. Uh, we have Aunt Asia, Ronald's <laughs> um, sister, Deacon Chapman, Coach Jackson, and Lisa and Suni, um, uh, Tyler and Ryan's uh, teammates with Team Peerless. So yep. um, how did you construct um, these characters? Because I know they're loosely based um, on your life and your village. So, I, and you probably shifted them somewhat to fit the dynamic of the story. So just talk about that. Yeah, and, and one of the things you mentioned there at the end, I want to just, you know, give a shout out to you and, and it's my village. And so when I, when I think about my village, it's those individuals that are in my life that, you know, support me, give me guidance. And, um, I can't thank them enough, um, for, for what they do and, and inspire me, uh, and encourage me. Uh, cause without my village, I would have definitely never finished this project. It would have been something I put on paper and put in a desk drawer somewhere, but, um, they kept encouraging me to finish and, and to write it. So, um, I, I love my village for that. But, um, to your point about the uh, the characters in the book. So um, as I was going through to your point, um, did make a few changes. And so I had actually, I had my, my kid's name in the book, my parents' name and kind of rode through because it helped me with the writing process. As I was thinking about scenarios, I was able to, to connect with the individual um, and then to go back and change a few of the names, not all. Um, so for example, you mentioned Ronald. Uh, Ronald is my father's name and he's the father in the book. And uh, to tell a little bit about his character, Ronald was a star basketball player in high school, loves the sport, still enjoys playing, um, and really is putting that on Tyler. I mean, Tyler's on the, the Tyler's his son. Um, Tyler's uh, playing basketball. However, he's not a big fan of basketball. He, he does it because he knows his dad enjoys it. He wants to make his dad proud. Um, and so he plays, but it's not something that his, his heart is in. It's not that, that passion for him. Um, and it really, you know, when I was writing that, I was able to draw on my own experiences. My father was also a big basketball guy, grew up in eastern North Carolina. Um, and so he was a big Michael Jordan fan and a Chicago Bulls fan. And so I was a Chicago Bulls fan and Michael Jordan growing up. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> he, he had an appreciation for the Hornets, but, you know, uh, Michael was near and dear to him. And yeah. so... Um, and so the same as I was, I was writing that, I was able to draw that, that connectivity there. And so Tyler, one day, as you mentioned, he's, uh, his good friend is Ryan. He's, um, he's at school and Ryan introduces him and tells him about golf. And so Tyler pleads with his dad to, to let him try this new sport. He wants to play this, uh, this game. And, you know, Ronald had some struggles with understanding why his son wanted to play this sport, particularly this sport. Um, and the book goes through to kind of uncover and talk about some of those those things. Um, but again, coming back to my own personal story. So um, as I mentioned, I did play basketball, but I was really curious about football. I wanted to play and it took a while to get my dad on board with allowing me to play. I also think about my own relationship with my son. Um, I'm a big world champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan. Um, and <laughs> Uh, I'm a big, big Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan, and um, I, I try to share that with my son, but he could care less about football. He's not a football guy. He, he likes, you know, soccer. He likes um, his video games and other things that have his interest. Um, but I can appreciate that he'll tolerate and watch a football game with me. So those are two things I was able to draw on um, with Ronald and Tyler's character. Um, Joy is the mother in the book, and she represents – like I mentioned earlier, that, that mother's ability to be able to support the, the needs, the emotional needs um, uh, of her, her husband as well as her son, understanding both of them, her, her husband's desire for, for Tyler to, to play basketball um, and Tyler's passion to do something else. Um, and I think she does a really nice job of being able to support, be sensitive to those feelings and emotions, but continue to move them through um, to acceptance um, and a place where they both are extremely happy and learn something new um, about themselves. Um, Aunt Asia is uh, is Ronald's younger sister. And I think we all had 
that aunt uh, along the way that, uh, that's willing to have a little extra fun with the nieces and nephews and um, introduce them to things that maybe their parents aren't ready to do or, or don't do on their own. Uh, but it's in a very positive way. Um, Aunt Asia, in this case, um, is, is high on education. She wants to make sure that her, her niece, niece and nephew um, are well-rounded. They get a lot of different experiences outside of the norm for kids their age. Um, which I think is positive, and, and I'm a big proponent of exposure and experiences. I think those things can be life-changing when we expose or expose individuals to new things or, or we try new experiences. And so that was a, a fun character to write, um, and a lot of what you see in there um, is a reflection of my sister's relationship with my son and some of the things that they've done and, and how they interact. Um, Chloe is a two-year-old um, little sister, inquisitive, um, makes you scratch your head at some of the things that she understands and, and some of the things that she tries to do. Um, I can I can visualize and see some of our um, older aunts and uncles looking at her and saying, man, she's been here before uh, with some of the things that she knows and does at two years old, but um, adds a little bit of levity to the story and a little bit of fun. Uh, Deacon Chapman, um, uh, I took that from a real character. So um, growing up, uh, my family was big. We, we always went to church on Sundays. Uh, we went to, to different churches often, but we all went to church on Sundays. And, and Deacon Chapman was an individual that attended my dad's church, older, gray haired gentleman, but super nice. Um, I enjoyed going to church and get a chance to speak to Deacon Chapman. And he'd always give me a dollar and we'd have a conversation and, until the point where I started expecting it. I felt entitled. I walked up to Deacon Chapman and said, hey, you got my dollar. Um, and that was the end of the dollars. But uh, the meaningful conversations continued. Um, and so Deacon Chapman in the book really pays homage to the real Deacon Chapman, and, and as you've seen and as others will, will read, um, he's really pivotal in Ronald and Tyler's life and being able to connect the two and help them to get to acceptance, helping them to, to understand the value of what Tyler is embarking in and, and on and, and how that can lead to some really positive things. Um, coach Jackson, the real Coach Jackson, was one of our high school coaches, and so that's a, it's a nod to, to him. Um, so the I went to... Uh, Went to grew up in Goldsboro, North Carolina, and the school that I went to, um, we didn't have a lot of um, African-American coaches. Um, I believe for me, um, Coach Jackson was probably my first black coach, period. Um, and it was the perfect coach at the perfect time. Um, you know, he was younger. He just graduated from Winston-Salem State University and came down. He was a um, teacher for us as well as our coach. And he really introduced us to HBCUs, um, the opportunity that may be for us to continue to play ball. Um, get our education at an HBCU, um, and also really looked out for us for from a you know staying out of trouble standpoint. We were never you know, bad kids, but you, know, you never know what's out there for you. And, and so Coach Jackson would rather throw a cookout at his house and have us come over and spend time there as opposed to get out and into some other things. And so um, I really owe a lot to, to him. And one of the, the big things that stood out to me and, and that I really appreciate that Coach Jackson did for me was – you know, when I was coming out of high school, this was before the electronic tapes and, and uh, digital footage. So he sat in the, the media center with me with a couple of VCRs and, and um, VHS tapes for a couple of hours to put together my highlight tape to send to colleges. Um, didn't have to do that. Did it on his own time. Um, but that was very influential in me being able to, to earn the scholarship that I did. So um, I gave Coach Jackson a nod in this book. He's not a football coach. He's a golf coach but very helpful to the development of Tyler and, and this board and, and, and overall. And then lastly was uh, Ryan, Lisa, and Suning. And so they're, they're Tyler's friends. As we mentioned, Ryan is the one that introduced Tyler to the game of golf. Um, Lisa and Suning are his teammates on the golf team. And so they are just those good friends that we all need to have, kind of support each other through different things um, and are, are there for one another. And so I, you get to see that unfold in, in the book as they are on Team Peerless together um, and, and uh, fight for a championship. Okay. 